Ladies and gents, if you don't know me, I run a channel called Cephian FM and mainly do a mix of Football Manager as well as non-FM related videos. But today I am here on behalf of the FM Network to introduce you to the joys of the MLS. Now, before we jump right in, I am by no means an expert, far from it actually. But having just done a quick save with Inner Miami a few months ago, I thought I'd share some of the wisdoms and pitfalls I've learned so far. As you set up your new save, pick your team, and I will assume you're starting in FM at the earliest possible moment for the MLS. If that's where you are, then get through all of your introductory work, checking on your squad, setting up your tactic, figuring out your backroom staff. One thing to note at the beginning, the only signings you really want to do, if any, and I'm saying if any, is in this intro period, is to look at your youth squad and possibly sign anyone with really good potential. Anyone that you think will be a breakout star in the very near future, go ahead and snap them up. Otherwise, leave them where they are. Don't go wild as the MLS rules really do come into play later on and will completely mess up your save if your squad is too large and the money's not there. Now, once you're done with that, and hopefully you've signed only one or two players at most, you will find yourself just a day before or so the first draft called the expansion draft. Now, if you know absolutely nothing about the U.S. sporting system, basically the way we grab new young players is by drafting them. The MLS is no different, although in this case, not only can you grab new players for your youth squad, but you can also find some for your first team as well, basically bolstering your squad depth. For the expansion draft, because the league is still growing, newly created teams are thrown into the mix every now and again, such as David Beckham's Inter Miami last year, Austin FC this season, and Charlotte FC for the 2022 season. This first draft is really more about adding to the squad depths for these newly created teams than anything else. So for the most part, if you're playing an already established team, you're not going to really care about this draft at all. As for taking part, there are basically two sides depending on which team you choose to manage. If you choose to manage an already established MLS team, like the LA Galaxy or LAFC or something like that, you have to start out by protecting up to 12 players in your squad who will not be able to participate in this draft. I don't know the tried or tested rule if there is one, uh, but basically in my save, I chose players you can't really afford to lose, like Higuain, um, and, a, and a couple of other, you know, Will Trap and all that. Those left unprotected will be able to be picked up by these teams actually participating in this draft. So you don't want to lose Chicharito or Dos Santos for free. However, if your unprotected player is not chosen, I believe they can just go back straight into your team like nothing ever happened. The other side of play is if you are managing a newly created team, like Austin FC in this case, brand new to the league. In this case, you get to actually take part in the expansion draft. This, and it will be important to you at the very beginning. The draft consists of five rounds where you get to choose one player from each round from the list of unprotected players from all the other teams. Any player you choose will slot directly into your team. Okay, now that we have our squad fairly intact, at least for the beginning period, and our first draft officially completed, you're pretty much going to work out on the same things you would in any other FM save. Get your tactics sorted, continue to look at your backroom staff, figure out where you need to enhance your squad, uh, scout a bunch of players, go right ahead and start doing that. But I would still strongly hesitate from actually signing anyone just yet. The biggest issue that I've heard and have seen with an MLS save on FM is the rules themselves. While they hold some similarities to certain leagues around Europe, or at least pieces of them, they are done so with a lot more complexity. For instance, there are four drafts in total, including the expansion draft. There are several different contract types you can offer to players. The transfer budget really isn't all that useful in the MLS unless you're actually looking at bringing in some foreign talent. And the transfer system itself in MLS is also very different. But the biggest rule of them all that I've found during my Miami save is the salary cap. Every team has to abide by a set amount of money to be used throughout the entire season. Again, I've seen this in other saves around Europe, but a little more complex sometimes here. In the first season, this salary cap is set to 78,000 pounds. You can't go over it and still register players for the season. You can't even continue the save when forced to register players at any given time during the season if you are still over that cap limit. Because of this, you really have to think of how you want to shape your squad very carefully and very strategically. As for the squad itself, there are a few type of contracts you can use, like I mentioned before. The first is a designated player. You have two DP slots initially, but you can buy a third slot if you have the money to spend. These players are generally of greater quality than you would find typically in the MLS. Uh, because of this, they command greater annual wages. 
Think Chicharito, Dos Santos, Rooney, and Gerard. Uh, because of their high wages, only a percentage of that wage actually counts towards the salary cap. So that's a good thing. After that, you have a young designated player, which is basically the same thing as a DP, except as you have to be 20 years or younger in order for it to count. Then we have what most players will be on, the senior contract. Think of this as ba your basic European contract that you would give to any of your squad members. Their full salary counts here towards the cap, so keep that in mind. Then you have your reserve contracts. These are basically for your younger players coming through the ranks, uh, for your youth and things like that, and they do not count for the salary cap, so that's an actually very important piece. If you can sign people to reserve contracts, terrific, do so. However, obviously they're not going to be as great a quality as your deeply DP or even your senior uh, contracts. One last contract to note, there are young players with the label Generation Adidas contract, or Adidas, or however you people say it. Uh, these are contracts, and they're only five to 10 or so every season. These are contracts given out to the highest rated prospects coming through the draft system throughout all the MLS. Uh, their salaries are exempt from the cap and are actually paid for by the MLS it itself, if I am not mistaken. But if you pick these up during the draft, you know that they won't count at all towards the salary cap and you're golden and they're pretty good prospects. So pick one up if you have the option. One major difference to the rest of the world is that you should not really look at transfers the same way as you would if you were managing Liverpool, for instance. True, you have a transfer budget that you can spend on other players around the world if you really want, like I mentioned before. However, if you've already have your designated player slots full, then this money really is kind of useless unless you put it towards wages. But even then, you still have to combat the salary cap. If you want to pay your players the highest wages imaginable, terrific, they'll love you. But if you can't get them under that cap, you'll have to cut a bunch of the players to do so, and you're kind of screwed. So the cap really is king here. Now, beyond the transfer budget, there is a more high and mighty number that you really need to keep in mind throughout your entire save. This is called the general allocation money, or GAM, or GAM for short. You won't find this on your finances tab, unfortunately, but if you go into the player profiles and then hit contract info, under the contract tab, you will see it on the right. It should read remaining general allocation money. But why is GAM so important, you ask? Good question. Like I said earlier, the salary cap was the bane of my existence during my Miami save. I could not for the life of me figure out how to get my registered squad underneath that cap. It took me forever and a day to figure that out. Well, in comes the GAM. Basically, one major piece that you can use the GAM for is to buy down players' contracts for that given season. For the Galaxy, Perry Kitchen's salary cap, for example, his impact is at £7,000 per year. So if I can right-click on him, go to the contract, buy down salary cap impact, I can use a certain amount of that GAM on his salary to bring his impact down from 7,000 to below that for a at least a little bit. If you have enough general allocation money to bring down a few players, you might be golden with that salary cap. However, if you don't have enough of that GAM and you have a huge difference in the salary cap to what you're actually spending, you are kind of screwed and you really have to get creative and figure things out immediately. Now, buying down a player's salary will only be active for that season, and then it shoots back up the following season to where it was before. But at least it might help you during this season to get under that cap temporarily. However, there is another way to use that you can use GAM money, and it's through another method of obtaining new players and possibly getting rid of those you aren't interested in keeping. Trading is an American pastime in sports. You can trade one player for another. You can throw in some GAM money into the trade. And you can even trade certain rounds in the Super Draft, which I'll talk about next, for the next few years. So there are definitely several ways of handling trades, but at the end of the day, it will only work if you actually give the other team something that'll make it worth their while. Obviously, you're not going to give up your tiny little youth prospect that has no potential and no future at your club for the biggest talent at someone somewhere else. You got to give up, you know, money. You got to give up a whole bunch of other things in order for even to attempt that. But now, with that said. And that we've finally talked about the some most of the main rules and the MLS setups. It's time to get into. Up until this point, you've mainly gotten to know your squad and your club as well as the rules of the MLS. Very important to know the rules of the MLS. But you most likely haven't really signed anyone, hopefully. Or at least dealt with adding quality or depth to your squad. 
this will be your first major method to look at doing so. The Super Draft will be your first real taste of a full-blown American draft in action, and it is a very important draft to take part in, probably the most important draft of the four that happened in the entire season. This is where you'll find a lot of youth talent coming directly from college or university to throw into your squad, either as a first team member or as someone in the reserves or anything like that. They're usually around 21 years of age and of varying potentials. Keep that in mind. So have your scout look at all these players and you can, you can actually find some real gems, especially those generation Adidas players. But overall, there are some actual quality players in there that you really want to scout out beforehand. To do so, somewhere in early to mid-December or thereabouts, you should actually see an email letting you know about the Major League Soccer Player Combine, and if you want to scout it or not. Definitely scout it. Definitely, definitely scout it. This combine is made of most of the players you will find in the Super Draft. I think it's about three quarters, or if not more, uh, and the Super Draft happens about a week later. I think it's the begin very beginning of January is the combine, and then a couple of days later is the actual Super Draft itself. So this combine is basically split into four teams who play against each other in a small tournament type of setting. This is a good way to have your scouts take a look at most of the super draft talent and get a handle on whom you should really start looking at drafting. So combine all that information and knowledge with what the board and the scouts are saying are the positions you need to fill in, your next, in the next season, and hopefully you'll find some really good gems in there. So now that you've scouted the players in the combine, it's actually time to enter the draft itself. The draft is made up of four rounds where every team in the league gets to make one pick from the pool of players during each round. Yet another note, if we quickly go back to the trading system again, if you remember me saying earlier, you have the choice of one other type of trade, the draft allocation trade. LA Galaxy, for the example, in this first super draft is in 20th position, which means that they have to wait through 19 other choices before they get to their pick. But if you really want a player or want to stack up on some early talent, they can always trade up for an earlier pick. Basically, the way the draft is set up, your position is based on the previous season's performance. So whoever won the season at the end of the season last year will most likely go last in the draft. So if I wanted Miami's second pick overall, I could try to persuade them by giving them our third or fourth round picks in 2021, 2022, and see if they'll bite. Maybe throw in a whole bunch of money. Who knows? Uh, just so you know, they won't. The top... The top set, I don't know, I'm going to guess the top five teams in the Super Draft will not give up their picks no matter what. I tried giving them millions of dollars for that first round draft pick. Nope, they rejected it flat out. The players in the draft are all random. You never know who will be left at any given time. For example, in Miami, I found that after round two, for the most part, uh, most of the good players had already been taken. So you're kind of left with choosing players you probably wouldn't want in your squad or at least are not really good enough for your first team and maybe not even as backups. So if you can trade a round three or four pick for a round one or two, then that might be a good use of that trade system if you know the other team actually allows it. Not saying you should, but just saying it's one more thing to think about. During the draft, you will hopefully have your wish list already set up and set to go. So just get to it and enjoy the process. Oh, by the way, if you ever hit that pass finish button, you're done. Uh, you're out of the draft completely, so make sure you never hit that button unless you're absolutely sure you do not want to take part in any of the draft from that point on. So now all you need to do is sit back, work your way through the rest of the draft, and there's one or two final pieces that you really have to worry about before the season can fully start. So you made it through your first Super Draft. Congratulations! Unfortunately though, the joy the Super Draft brings is not quite over just yet. Even though you drafted these players, they're technically still not a part of your team. You have to negotiate contracts and hope they say yes to your terms. Typical, normal transfer business. So make sure you actually want these players before you sign them and possibly can't afford them. If you are in round four and finding really bad choices but decide to make a pick anyway, just remember, you always have the option to walk away from the negotiating table. This is something I did not do in Miami and it kind of screwed me with the salary cap. Remember, the cap is king. So if you pick up these players that you don't really need, you're spending money on these players that will head towards the salary cap and could really just bite you in the ass at some point along the way, if not right after this step. Once you've figured out which players you actually want in your squad, the last piece of this entire puzzle before the season can start 
is the squad registration. Again, this is the biggest season worry of them all from my perspective. Once you get past this hurdle, I won't say the rest is cake because you'll have issues along the way, but this is the first and biggest hurdle you'll ha ever have in an MLS save. Again, that's what I saw in my season with Miami, so I can only pass that along. Now, you can register players pretty much at any time during the season. You just have to make sure that the rules are followed or you could easily find yourself in trouble with the registration police. One more major difference here is that generally you cannot play your youth squad in the first team unless they have been registered with the first team at some point along the season. Keep that in mind. So if your star striker goes down for several weeks, you are fairly out of luck if you don't have a backup already in your registered squad. And while placing a longer term injury player on the disabled list will free up a roster spot you can fill with trades or free agency, that player's salary still is in place towards the cap. So if you're just below the cap limit, you will have to get real creative on how you bring in another squad member to fill their role. So you'll now have two players with salary cap implications instead of just the one, even though you cannot play that person. Now, there are methods of getting rid of players you don't want anymore. Trading them or transferring them off to other teams would be the most ideal. But barring that, you can actually waive a player, meaning they will no longer be part of your squad. Basically, what happens is you put them on the waiver wire. They have other teams have a couple of days in order to say, yes, I want that that player or not. And if no one picks them up, then you can officially waive them, which means bye bye. They're no longer part of the squad registration and or part of your squad. They are out of the team completely. However, if they have guaranteeing contracts such as a DP or a senior contract, then even if they are waived and free agents and no longer associated with your team in any respect whatsoever, they still count towards your salary cap for that given season. It's a huge issue with many people's FM saves. And I mean, from what I've seen, and I've seen it myself. So it's the funkiness of the MLS rules that you can kick a player to the curb. Unfortunately, your salary cap and your team is still paying their contract for the rest of the season, unless someone picks them up. It's just insane. One other note, if you find someone yourself on the waiver wire that you are really interested in, or even just mediocre interested in, and you end up placing a bid and win for that player, you are then forced to automatically register them. You have no choice. You can't suddenly just drop your interest. And if you're already at cap level or thereabouts, your registration with this player becomes all the more interesting and the harder it is to deal with. Beyond all of that, there really isn't much else to an MLS save, at least not from what I've seen. Stick to the rules, stay under the salary cap, and build your team with those rules in mind, and you're pretty much golden. The only other pieces left to deal with before this next season begins is yet another expansion draft if there are new teams coming in like the Charlotte FC team coming in in, in 2022. Then there's kind of two more lower level drafts. There's the waiver draft, which consists of all the players waived by their clubs who have not yet found a club to join but don't really meet the minimum years in the league required by this. the next draft, their re-entry draft, which is a two-day phase draft. This draft is used to give teams a chance to select more experienced MLS players who don't currently have a contract, but don't, you know, they don't want to leave the league just yet. And whew, that does it. There we have it. A fairly comprehensive list of things you will need to deal with and sort out when choosing a team in the MLS to manage. I would honestly say that managing the MLS requires a lot more strategy, like I said, and patience. Patience is key than in other areas around the world from what I've tried and tested. You really have to keep an eye out for your salary cap first and foremost and build or grow a team around that, or at least with that firmly in place in your mind. If you just want to jump into an MLS save and see what managing in America is like, you may not have that grand old of a time if you're not keeping these rules in place in your mind. But if you actually take the time to learn the rules and follow the rules, find the right players for your squad and your tactic, you may actually find one of the most satisfying saves that FM has to offer. Now, if FM can just treat the MLS properly, that would be a whole new ball game. As I've mentioned before, FM treats the MLS as though they care very little for American football, or soccer, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Anyway, that does it for me, Sefian FM, and my take on the MLS for the FM network. I'm sure there's plenty I haven't covered, but feel free to leave a comment below and let us know what questions you may have, and we'll be sure to answer them, you know, as best as we can. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more FM Network content, and then head on over to my channel, Sefian FM, to find out how well I, my Miami save went, especially at the beginning. That was some rough times. But anyway, 
Thanks so much for watching. Take care and enjoy.